Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Dean's Hobby Stop in Owasso, Michigan. Dean's has one of the Midwest's largest selections of used kits at great prices. They also feature new kits and supplies as well. Call Dean's to get their mail order list featuring hundreds of vintage kits or check their website for great deals on both new and classic models. This review covers the TV Street Rod Dune Buggy. It's a 125 scale kit from AMT number 907. It's skill level 2 kit and was issued in 2015. Now this kit, the Myers Manx and the VW Superbug Gasser were all based on the same chassis and were issued originally in 1969. Of the three, the Myers Manx is the more realistic of the group. And this kit can be built one of three ways, as an off-road buggy, a street buggy, or an open, nobody dune buggy. All that said, this review is really about not having to stick to building your model out of the box. As a modeler, you can use your imagination to build anything you want. Now the TV dune buggy and the VW gasser were somewhat more playful, so we decided to hop up the street version with an aftermarket fuel injected Corvair engine from an aftermarket kit. Now there's a link for the full build and review for the engine in the video description uh, below here and it's not really that far-fetched as this was actually done quite often back in the 60s and 70s and with a curb weight of around 1500 pounds and an engine pushing 165 horsepower this buggy was quick enough for street or sand. Now the kit is molded in red, chrome, clear, clear yellow and clear red and there's 118 parts. And out of the box the finished kit with the VW engine is about 5 inches long but this modification with a Corvair upgrade is 5.5 inches long, 2 and 3 quarter inches wide and 2 and a half inches high. Oh well that sounds like uh, Newt, he's tapping on the glass, he's our program director and he's got something uh, he wants to say about this model. These look like a blast! Are those guys still available? I'm happy to say that they are, Newt. There's a number of companies out there that provide uh, the dune buggy bodies and uh, conversion sets and uh, not only the uh, chopped uh, uh, modified frames, but uh, even the full length uh, body or chassis there. So if you want to make one of these, you've got a little uh, time on your hands and a place to put her together. Um, yeah, you could put one of these uh, up and uh, have some great fun with it. Now here are the contents of the kit and there's uh, many parts which will not be used because it depends on the version that you build. Uh, some are on other versions of kits that aren't even included here and it's got quite a bit of molding flash but it's easily cleaned off as you see here and there's really no parting lines on the body because uh, the fender edges are really where the parting lines are. Now it has like I said some flash and it's easily trimmed off with a hobby knife and uh, a sand stick. Now here are the decals for the kit and um, you know they're quite colorful. The register is good uh, but you know each uh, section there lends itself to different styles of the build. The decals that I used for my build uh, from this sheet uh, didn't require any setting solution but you may find it uh, useful on the larger decals for other versions. Here's uh, the blue printer parts pack from AMT and it came with two engines in it. Uh, uh, it also, you know, the, the Corvair engine there is kind of outlined in the white lines. Um, but you know what? You can use just about any engine you want. Uh, you just need to modify it to make it look kind of realistic. Uh, but here are the parts for the Corvair engine. It's a, a pretty nice build, very detailed, and we'll show you the instructions here so that uh, if you do get one of these, you, you have the instructions for building it. And uh, this is the one that we used. And we'll also uh, show you in a, uh, a URL at the description here uh, the entire build for this model. Although we did modify it for this build using uh, injector stacks and a little bit different exhaust setup. But it makes for a really nice looking engine uh, and uh, you can uh, put this in uh, with no regard to uh, an unrealistic outcome because they actually were used uh, in the uh, early days uh, to make these uh, dune buggies go zippy fast. Now you may also notice that um, the Volkswagen transaxle is used on this engine. I, I cut it off from the uh, original uh, models kit 
engine and um, with a, a micro saw and an exacto blade and also some of the exhaust pipes uh, I took from my parts box because uh, the uh, ones that came with the Corvair engine would actually kind of interfere with uh, the rear tires. So once again, this is a exercise in artistic license. And so we're also going to show you, um, you know, the buildup of the Volkswagen engine that comes with the kit. And as you can see, most of the pieces are chrome plated, uh, but to add a little realism, <laughs> a chrome block is not often uh, that common, so you might want to paint those and strip some of the chrome off for that. Here's the exhaust uh, setup. Quite often they would send that up and out so that it uh, didn't hit any of the um, dune sands as it was going through out there. But uh, this is um, the construction of the model as you see it. The, the exhaust uh, is often painted back then in high temp white. And here's, uh, you know, these pictures uh, are of the completed engine. The uh, cases, the heads, the transaxles, uh, they got painted aluminum. The cylinders are flat black and the distributor is silver with a black cap. And here are the, um, the front tires and wheels with the uh, brake drums and the, and the axle hub stubs there. And uh, the outer wheel halves and the inner rings need to be pushed together into the tires because they're solid in front. Uh, but also note you have to remove the chrome from the mating surfaces so those uh, places where you put them together with glue will adhere. The tires uh, are a solid vinyl for the front and a hollow vinyl for the rear on the street version. And the off-road tires uh, and the bodiless uh, dune buggy use two uh, two-piece plastic tires that you would glue together in halves and then uh, paint. Now the street tires are the old style with nice tread and they've got some sidewall script. The rear tires and wheels here uh, show that the outers and the inners can be glued together uh, as the tires are hollow. And then uh, after that you can slip the tires right over from the back side uh, to complete the assembly. Here are the major parts for the floor pan uh, and we're going to clean those up uh, and the underbody and suspension here. So uh, all the parts are painted a gloss black and then we're going to assemble those and here you see the floor pan with the front and rear suspensions uh, installed in place. Now on the rear suspension the engine and the transaxle need to be glued in first and then slip the metal axle into the transaxle. The trailing arms can then be glued in place and everything will easily line up. The shocks and the tie rod can be installed before painting and the instructions show that the roll bar being installed after the body goes on uh, but I found it easier to mount the roll bar before the body goes on like right here. I painted all of the floor pan as I mentioned and then assembled those uh, as, as a unit and painted it all at one time. And now you see the uh, seats have been uh, put into place and I found it easier to put those in now before gluing the body on. So I also painted the floor a flat brown and the seats a semi-gloss brown with some black seat belts. The roll bar was painted with uh, some chrome paint to give it a little flash. Here you see the major body pieces. Uh, it comes in three parts and I glued them together before painting so that we would get uh, you know good uh, even coat on the entire body. Now and also colors uh, for the body to, uh, for the grill to be body color but I later uh, I changed that to chrome. I'll locate the, uh, the gas tank and it comes in two parts as you see. So glue the two pieces together and uh, then it will be glued to the underside of the front of the body. So I didn't use any paint on top. Now here you see the body in uh, primer gray, uh, but I also had to add an extension to the bed. Um, and I did that with a little bit of sheet stock. You can get that from Evergreen or Plastruck, you know, uh, and I made that a little longer uh, to accommodate the longer Corvair engine. And that also meant that the bed cover uh, was longer. And so what I did was I, I used the Surrey top, which is only used on the Nobody Open dune buggy. And the top has a nice texture molded in it, which match, matches the street, the top on the street version. And so the, the measurements uh, are uh, 1 and 5 eighths by 1 and 5 sixteenths and I trimmed that to fit the top of the pickup bed. And so the rest of the construction is 
pretty simple. It's, a, it's an easy kit to build, but uh, you can follow along with the instructions uh, at the end of the review here if you need them. Uh, but I painted the, uh, the bed cover brown like the interior browns. Uh, and I also uh, used um, a primrose yellow, uh, which actually is a uh, one-shot brand, a 130L, uh, to paint the body. Added the decals and the uh, other parts, you know, the chrome piece, the headlights, etc., which are really easily located, and um, finished up the kit. As you see here, there's a lot of pieces left over. Uh, the sand wheels uh, for a sand dune buggy, uh, the chromies there, and all the uh, body parts that go to the different versions. Well, there you have it. Uh, this unique uh, little uh, masterpiece is one of a kind. And you can do the same thing with any kit that you build, um, you know, unless you're building a specific and historical vehicle. But this little guy takes on a new persona with a little bit of extended uh, bed there and a Corvair uh, fuel-injected engine. This is a real go-getter, and uh, on the street, this would have gotten a lot of attention. And it isn't that far-fetched because all the mods were actually something that were done uh, to these kind of vehicles back in the day. And uh, you can do just about anything you want to your model. Uh, don't let anybody tell you you can't. Uh, reach into that parts box uh, and the old decals uh, and, and make something unique that is truly uh, a piece of work that only you could have made. So if I were you, I'd buy a kit, start hacking, and make it your own. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review, and you can always find us on Facebook or our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.